hello welcome thank you for joining me as you can see I'm just sitting here it's uh, sometime in the afternoon I'm just finishing up my break and I decided let me jump on in here and just talk about some brief information so last week was was it last week um, earlier this month we celebrated nurses week and if I remember well, one of the bigger hospitals I worked at here in Houston always had a very nice celebration for the nurses for the entire week. And then they wound it up with a gala for nurses celebration. And I really remember the last one that I went to. It was beautiful. It was a um, masquerade. Was it masquerade? I don't even remember now, but it was beautiful. Um, I enjoyed it with my hubby and that's one of the many dates we always looked forward to every year but I want to tie that to uh, mental health awareness so this month is mental health awareness and as a psych nurse practitioner I am very proud to always spread news on mental health awareness there's a lot of stigma that surrounds this especially from my African culture we haven't embraced that for us, um, as a whole issue, as a whole diagnosis, as a situation that affects us as youths, adults, older generation. And so I'm just here to spread awareness to everybody out there. And I specifically want to speak to the nursing profession. I have been a nurse for several years and currently I work as a nurse practitioner. And there's so much that goes on beyond just patient care. There's a lot of frustration that goes on uh, within the nursing profession, which ends up tying into mental health involvement. So there are several issues, as I mentioned, and I don't want to really make this video long. I want to make it as short as I can make it, but I also want to beat into the main points. First, um, one thing that I know for sure that makes nursing profession very, very stressful is the long hours. So recently in here in Houston, we had a very bad storm that affected very many people. And that means some nurses were stuck at work and others were not able to make it in. And if others are not able to make it in, that means the rest were working short. Nursing as a profession is a 24 seven thing in most places. So if you've already worked your 12 hours and your relief can't make it in, that means you're gonna have to stay longer. And if the other people can make it into work and part of the team is not able to, that means you have to work short, meaning you have to put in more effort than you should have. And if this is a 12 hour shift, really that, that wears you out. So long hours can make it really hard. And with the long hours, when you finish with your shift and you go home to your family, you don't have that energy to interact with them. If you have younger kids like me, after hearing all the noise at work and you go home, you don't want to listen to all the screams of your kids, all the stories they have to tell you. You still have to be there. You still have to be present. But it's just not the same as if you had energy. So these long hours can affect you as an individual, can affect your family as well. And this is where nurses become very agitated, very irritable. And before you know it, you're going into a depression mode because you can't do the things you used to be able to do. And this is in relation to exhaustion from work. So I always preach, make sure you take good care of yourself. Take good care of your family. They should be your priority. And I tell this all the time that your job will continue thriving whether you're there or not you are like a minute atomic habit or atomic item to them if anything goes wrong at your place of work like you're fired you you're let go you become injured you become sick they're not going to close their doors unless you're the only person who has the who, who is taking care of people in that place so i always preach make sure you take good care of yourself and the next thing I want to talk about is poor coping skills. As nurses, uh, we see a lot from celebrations when a family gives birth to their loved ones or when your 
patient becomes married and they sell, they share that with you um you also see deaths you see um chronic diagnosis so these are things that can really affect an individual in every aspect so if you don't have good coping skills it really brings you down it tears you down and that's why some places do have chaplains they do have uh, psychiatrists that are there just to talk to employees to make sure that adjusting well to every situation at my previous job we used to have like a briefing session after let's say after a court and a patient passes away it's going to be traumatic for people especially those who are there doing cpr uh, though the nurse was taking care of this patient maybe you are you are more acquainted with the family members and you have to break the news to them you have to let them know hey you've lost your loved one or if it's a patient who had a diagnosis that relates to a family member let's say for me for an example i lost my sister to breast uh, to liver cancer a situation where i meet an individual about the same age who is dying from um, cancer or who's been diagnosed with cancer it kind of hits back and these are some of the scenarios that can affect us as individuals uh, we are humans and we have to accept the fact that we need to hold each other's hands and help us with the coping strategies if you have a chaplain at your place of work if you have um anybody you can talk to psychiatrists make sure you utilize these uh these services because most places offer them free of charge you get a couple of number of sessions with them before they refer you out to somebody for ongoing care so make sure you utilize this so coping strategies is very very key for nursing as a profession for nurses as an individual the other thing is lack of support from staff and management and this is very broad don't get me wrong not every leadership there is not supportive but when you find a leader who will insist on you coming to work when you're not feeling well who will insist on you uh, taking over more responsibilities that you, than you're not able to this is not the right leader for you and that means you have to rethink your decisions is this a place you want to stick to and i've seen people stick to places because of the benefits because of the hours because it's close to work and you forget that your mental health is very key to the point that this is going to be breaking you every single day you leave work to go home and every single day when you walk into the building to take care of your patients you just you're just relieving the same awful scenario so those were my main three points of on which i wanted to talk briefly about why nursing as a profession can be very toxic and can be very burning as an individual and even as a facility so make sure you you analyze yourself as an individual and see what is it that you want to achieve for yourself and for your family is it a job that's gonna break you every single day or is it a job that you can go to smiling and taking care of your patients and knowing that by the end of the day you have made a difference and don't forget always take a self-care day yes it doesn't matter if you can take a self-care day sit in your pjs the whole day with your remote if that's what makes you happy go for it if uh, traveling is what makes you happy for self-care go for it whatever makes you happy and whatever gives you the energy to keep pushing through always go for it and as always thank you for joining me in this video till next time peace out